Uh, this video is on using the sum and difference rule for derivatives. So uh, it basically has to do with, all right, so sum and difference rule. Uh, it basically has to do with if you had two functions being added or subtracted uh, and you wanted to take the derivative of that, how would you do it? And typically what you do is take the derivative of, you know, each function individually. So what it really says is if I have the derivative, so the derivative with respect to x in this case of some function f of x plus or minus g of x. It's only me one or the other. So if I am taking the derivative of functions being added or subtracted, it's equal to taking the derivative with respect to x of the first function plus or minus taking the derivative with respect to x of the second function. So basically what we're saying is, you know, you take derivatives term by term. And that's how we'll see it in the examples we're about to look at. So if I said, for example, to differentiate, which remember means find the derivative. Uh, the first one I'll look at, I'll say f of x equals 4x cubed minus 7x squared plus 9. And you know, when you're doing this, the first thing you should look at is, do I need to rewrite any of the terms uh, into a form that I know how to differentiate? Uh, the last video, we talked about the power rule, and if I didn't have things that were already written as, you know, the variable to a power, I might want to try to get them in that form. Uh, in this case, I, I don't have anything that I have to rewrite. Right? Everything's in a form that I can already differentiate, so I'm just ready to take the derivative. Now, I'm not going to write it out formally like I did above, what I'm really saying is take the derivative term by term. That's what this really tells us to do. So f prime of x here is equal to, if I take the derivative of 4x cubed, you remember how the power rule works. You bring the 3 down in front, so 3 times 4 is 12, times x to the 3 minus 1 in the power becomes 2, right? Subtract 1 from the exponent. Uh, for the next term, we have negative 7, right? And then times x to the second, so you bring the 2 down in front, 2 times negative 7 makes us a negative 14, x to the 2 minus 1 would just be to the first power, so I don't have to even write the power there. And then the derivative of a constant, derivative of 9, remember, for a constant, the derivative is always 0, so put plus 0. And, you know, you don't have to show this plus 0, I'm showing it here so you understand what I did and I didn't just ignore it, uh, but the actual answer, right, for f prime of x would be equal to 12x squared minus 14x. And that's the derivative of that function above. So it's really no different than what you've seen before. It's just doing it term by term. Uh, we'll look at another one. All right, we'll take a look at this one here. If I said I had y equals uh, 32x plus the square root of x minus 4 over x. Uh, again, the first thing you should look at is if any of the terms need to be rewritten in a form that we know how to take the derivative of. In other words, in a form of the variable to a power. Uh, the first one you're okay with, but the next term, that square root of x, would need to be rewritten. And so would this 4 over x, because right now they're not in the form of x to a power. So we're going to do a rewrite. Remember, RW is standing for rewrite here. You don't take the derivative yet. This is the same function, so make sure you call it y. So you got y equals 32x. That doesn't need to be written, rewritten. We already have x uh, just to a power. Plus, how do I rewrite the square root of x as x to a power? Well, it's x to the, the power in x is 1 over a radical. Remember, the root, the index of it always goes in the denominator. So it's 1 half for a square root because the index is 2. Minus 4 over x. Now, really, the x is what I want to move up to the numerator, right? So I want to make this x to a power. So the minus 4 will stay. This will be x to the, it's to the power 1 in the denominator. To move it up, we have to make it negative, so x to the negative 1. Now, don't stop here, right? All we did was rewrite it in an equivalent form. We actually haven't taken the derivative yet. And make sure before you take any derivatives, you rewrite it first. You can't just take some of the derivatives and not other parts. So you couldn't have taken the derivative of this right away and then left these the same. You have to do it all at the same time. So we did a rewrite. Now we're going to find the derivative of y prime. So derivative of 32x, remember the constant times the function, the constant stays in front, is 32. Derivative of x is just 1. So it's just 32 times 1, which is 32. All right, so remember the derivative of x is always 1. Um, plus 
derivative of x to the 1 half, remember the 1 half comes in front, so plus 1 half x to the 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And here we got minus 4x to the negative 1. Remember, you bring the negative 1 in front, so it's a negative 1 times a negative 4, which really makes this a plus. It changes the sign. Plus 4x to the negative 1 minus 1 in the x one. Make sure you're subtracting. Makes it more negative. Makes this negative 2. Now, if I ask you to not simplify, and sometimes I'll say do not simplify, you could leave it just like this, and I would expect you to. But if I do ask you to simplify, make sure you know how. So we have y prime equals is 32. Plus, we have 1 half x to the negative 1 half. The negative tells you to move the x to the denominator. All right, so the negative x1 tells you to move to the denominator make it positive. The x to the 1 half part tells you to take the square root. So this is really plus 1 over 2 square root of x, right? Negative moved it down. The 1 half is telling you that the root is 2, square root x to the first power. And we have plus 4x to the negative 2. So this is plus... The negative 2, remember, only applies to the x, not the 4, so the 4 will stay in the numerator. The negative on the x tells you to move it to the denominator and make the exponent positive, so we got 4 over x squared. And that is it. You cannot combine these. They're not like terms. Don't make one big frac uh, fraction and put them all over that. Sometimes people do that by mistake. You want to make sure that you write it, uh, you know, term by term. All right, and let's just take a look at uh, an application using this. Uh, remember when we take derivatives, you know, you're finding the slope of the tangent line at a point. So if I ask you to do this, if I said, uh, find the points on the graph of f of x equals one-third x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x plus 50 at which the tangent line is horizontal. So let's talk about what that really means. If I want the tangent line to be horizontal to this graph, right? Think about what the horizontal line would be. A horizontal line means that it's the line that has, you know, just y equals a number. So a horizontal line would be just a flat line, meaning the slope is zero. So what they're really trying to tell you here is find when the slope equals zero. To find when the slope equals zero, what we really need is when the derivative equals zero, right? The slope of the tangent line is what the derivative is. So we need f prime of x equal to zero, all right? And find the x values, right? So we're going to find the x values where this occurs because that's going to tell us where the tangent line is horizontal because the slope is zero. Um, so, let's find that. So, the first thing we need for our solution here, I have to find when f prime of x equals 0, I need f prime of x. So, f prime of x, we're taking the derivative of this function right here. We've got 1 third x to the third. Remember, the 3 comes down. 3 times 1 third is just going to be 1 times x to the power becomes 2. So, it's x to the second power. Minus, we've got 6x squared. The 2 comes down front, so it's minus 2 times 6, which is 12. And then x to the first power. Plus the derivative of 11x. Well, that's just plus 11, because remember the derivative of x goes to 1, so 11 times 1 is just plus 11. And then the derivative of 50, it's a constant, so that goes to 0. So f prime of x equal to x squared minus 11x plus 11. Once you have that, uh, we want to set that equal to zero and solve for x, right? That's what this really says to do. We want to find when f prime of x equals zero. We want to find when this equals zero. So we're going to solve this equal to zero. All right, so we're going to set this equal to zero. And here's where you have to kind of remember your algebra skills. This is x squared minus 11x plus 11. You want to try to solve that by factoring, right? It's a quadratic. Trying to factor this, you know, you want things that multiply together, right? x squared gives you x times x in the front of each of these. You want things that multiply to 11 and add to a negative 12. Uh, well, numbers that do that are negative 11 
and negative 1, right? Negative 11 times negative 1 gives you a positive 11. Negative 11 plus negative 1 gives you a negative 12. And then the way we solve this is, remember, you set each of these equal to 0. Uh, and then, you know, I'll add 11 to each side here. I get x equals 11. Here I'll add 1 to each side. I get x equals 1. Now, I found the x values, right? But I want the points on the graph. So the x values aren't the points. The x values are the first part of the coordinates. You also need the corresponding y values of where this occurs. So when I'm looking for these, right, I've got the x values. Don't stop here. I want the points. The points on the graph means I want the y values. So how do I find the y values that go along with these x values? Well, I substitute them back into the original f of x. Uh, so doing that, what I'm really doing is I'm looking for f of 11 and I'm looking for f of 1. So right now, find the y values. Really the corresponding y values is what I'm saying. So you do that by substituting into f of x. So f of 11, right, the first x value I found, uh, would mean I have 1 third times 11 to the third power minus 6 times 11 squared plus 11 times 11 plus 50. And doing that, um, you know, you can do this on a calculator. 11 to the third power gives me this is uh, 1331 over 3 minus 6 times uh, 11 squared. Well, 11 squared is 121 times 6, so minus 726 plus 11 times 11, we just said is 121 plus 50. So combining those, I have 1331 over 3, uh, negative 726 plus 121 plus 50 gives me a negative 555. And if I wanted to write this as, um, you know, a common denominator, I have to multiply numerator and denominator by 3. So that would give me 1331 over 3 minus uh, 555 times 3 gives me 1665 over 3. And subtracting those, we have 1331 minus 1665, uh, which is negative 334. And that's all over 3. So one ordered pair I get right from this part would be 11 comma negative 334 over 3. That's one point on the graph where the tangent line is horizontal, where it's flat. Um, typically this means that there's like a dip or uh, a max, right? So you'll have like a, like a hill, right? You'll have either something like this, which would be horizontal there, or something like this, a dip where you would hit the bottom and go back up. Um, so like a peak or a valley, smooth, flat line that touches there, right? That's really telling you if it's a horizontal tangent line. And we'll talk about that more in the next section. So they're saying at this point, this behavior might happen on the graph. Um, the other point, make sure you get both, right? So that was f of 11, right? And then f of one, similar but different, a little easier to calculate. Uh, I'll do it down here just so I have more space. F of 1, that would be equal to 1 third times 1 cubed, which would just be uh, you know, 1, minus 6 times 1 squared, plus 11 times 1, plus 50, just so you can see it, ends up being 1 third minus 6, plus 11, plus 50, which ends up being one third minus six plus eleven would be a positive five plus fifty would be uh, plus fifty five. Uh, fifty five plus the one third. Well, we have to rewrite this using a common denominator. We would have uh, one third plus fifty five uh, times three, which would be one sixty five over three. Adding those together. I get 166 over 3. So the other point where this occurs, all right, the x value is 1, the y value that goes with it is 166 over 3. So 
at these two points on this function f of x, the, the tangent line is horizontal. In other words, it has a slope of zero. Later on, we'll learn that this is a way that we can possibly find minimums or maximums of the graph because what's going to happen is it'll be a horizontal line means it would be touching and going up to it or touching and going down to it. Uh, so we'll use that, you know, later on in, in the text and in, uh, in the course. But, you know, it's going to be important to figure out. The only other thing I want to point out is some questions they might try to ask you, you know, instead of saying at which the tangent line is horizontal, they might say when the slope is 5 or something like that. If they asked you when find the points where the tangent line has a slope of 5, you'd be setting this equal to 5 here, and then you'd have to solve that equation, which means you'd have to move it to the other side and get in the standard form. Uh, so hopefully this application helped a little bit, just to give you an idea of where we're heading with this. You know, this is what we're going to be using later on in the course to help us sketch graphs. Um, but, you know, it comes, it comes down to it that I just wanted to show you how the sum and difference rule would work. Uh, and really what it means is you take derivatives term by term.